Hello YouTube friends! This is a little bit of an experiment. I'm using this cool 8mm film app on my iPhone. And uh, this is an inspirational video from our good friend Jim Lindeness in Canada, who did a similar video on a Gernsback book. I don't remember, I don't know which one it was. I don't think it was this one. I picked this up uh, off eBay at a good price. It's the S. Gernsback Radio Encyclopedia. And I thought it would be kind of cool to do it in the uh, old 8mm format. And I'm going to directly update, upload this to my uh, YouTube account. So we'll just kind of peruse through this. And this is uh, made in... Uh, oh boy. This app doesn't focus well. I don't know. Let me try. 1927 by Sidney Gernsback. It's the original publication. And uh, a little rough, the spine's a little open, but I'm just going to be gentle with it. It basically is an encyclopedia of all things radio from 1987. We even have the, uh, the Q uh, signals for ham radio in it. And that's under abbreviations. I like this section here. I've already looked through this a little bit. The uh, aerial section. We have aerials and... I like this one. I don't think the wife would have let this happen. They've got like four wire aerial going across the top of the room from, uh, looks like picture molding, from side to side and then down to the radio. That would be fun to put up. And then they have all these interesting antennas. The antennas back in the old days, in the 20s and 30s, they tended to go for a lot more wires. Uh, I guess for a broader band uh, range. I know some people still occasionally will use a broadband caged aerial. This is almost like a um, multi-band uh, fan dipole there. Oh no, those are, those are counterpoises for the one going vertical above it, which would give you your ground plane for a vertical antenna. For transmitting mainly. Here's one on an airplane hanging down below it. And this has all different famous people in it. Uh, and w the one thing which I'll get to that remind me of Jim Lindeness. Well one, that he did a video similar to this on one of these old books. And two, there's an important guy in here that he was complaining was not in his book. <laughs> of course we have Mr. Armstrong, the uh, famous inventor that Invented tons of radio. He, he, he invented the super heterodyne. He invented FM radio. Did not get the do he was worth, you know, at the time. He actually ended up committing suicide because he had a fight with uh, RCA founder. Um, oh, what the heck was his name? Started with an S. I can never think of it. Basically, he didn't get credit for all the work he did. He was one of the best and greatest inventors of the day of radio. I saw one of his original FM radios at the Bloomberg, uh, New York Radio and Museum. They have one of his originals when he was actually just making FM radio. He invented FM radio. Did it working for RCA. And RCA basically stole the patents from him. He fought them legally, but RCA had tons of money and they just outpaid, out, out, kept appealing him, you know, until he ran out of money and he couldn't fight him anymore. And I think it was over that that he had actually committed suicide. He was so discouraged. Oh, Sternoff? Sternoff? I think I'd, I knew I'd think of it. He was the head of RCA back in the day that uh, hired Armstrong and then fought with him later. Look at these old motors. Huge. The old big radio equipment. Here's somebody's recording uh, piano. I don't want to make this video too long. I don't have a lot of space on my phone. I took a trip with my son up to uh, Seattle, Washington, and we took a ton of pictures, so I don't have a lot of room on it. This is the guy, Mr. Fezenden. Reginald Aubrey Fezenden. Canadian-American radio expert, born in Milton, Canada, October 6, 1866, educated in New York Port Hope, Ontario. Fessenden became the inspecting engineer for the Edison Company in New York and afterwards a professor of physics and electronics and engineering in Western University in 1892. 
Professor Fessenden is the author of the well-known system of wireless, and below are briefly described some of his patents. In 1806 and 18, 1906, 1907, Fessenden invited a number of microphone transmitters, invented a number of microphone transmitters which carried heavy currents for long periods and heavy current telephone relays, which allowed controlling of heavy currents by means of small circuits, currents, originating in the ordinary microphone circuit. One of these is called the Fessenden, called by Fessenden a trough transmitter, consisting of a soapstone annulus in which there were clamped two plates having platinum iridum electrodes through a hole in the center and a rod that attached to one end of to a diaphragm. So he's a famous Canadian radio guy that who was not mentioned in the book that uh, from Gernsback that Jim Linden has had. And here he is. He appears in the Gernsback Encyclopedia from 1927. But this is just a neat old book. If you ever see any old Gernsback books on uh, eBay, they have lots of cool stuff in them. This being the Encyclopedia. Of course, he put himself in there. Although Hugo, I think, is his father, and here is Sidney. And I think that's the guy that published this book. I think it's S. Yeah, S. Gernsback. That's, he put himself in his own book, of course. Well, why wouldn't you? It's your book. I don't know how famous... Well, he's famous for publishing books. I don't know what else he did. There's a grid leak resistor. And the thing that's neat is it shows little circuits... Mr. Hammond, you've heard of Hammond Transformers, I'm sure, if you know anything about radio. Mr. Hertz, of course, Mr. Henry. We deal with micro Henrys and Hertz in uh, voltages and all that. Mr. Hogan, I don't know what he did. I'm not going to read it. I don't, have to, I don't want to read everything because, as I said, my, my memory is almost full on my phone and I don't know how long I'm going to be able to videotape this for. I apologize for flipping quickly. I'm already up to seven minutes. It's amazing how quick time goes by when you're taping and rattling on. Uh, but I mainly did this to show Mr. Fessenden, the famous uh, Canadian radio man. There's Mr. Marconi himself. He actually got credit for inventing the first radio. He didn't actually invent the radio. He took all the parts that other people invented and put them together and made a functioning radio out of the parts. He didn't really invent any of the components so much. He kind of took credit for other people's work as what I've always heard over the years. But he gets credit for making the first radio, uh, actual radio, by taking the circuits that other people invented and putting them together and making it usable. Um, kind of like, well, I'm trying to think of a modern equivalent. I'm thinking of Steve Jobs and, uh, and Apple. You know, he's the famous guy, but you know, his his good friend um, uh, Roz, the guy in the garage who actually invented the Apple computer, uh, I can't think of his name, Foz. He had a weird nickname. He ended up being uh, part of Apple for many years, and I, I he eventually left. And the, he actually invented the first Apple computer. And Steve Jobs was just the promo guy. You know, he was the guy that just promoted it and sold it. My son just came in to get socks, so I'm just going to restart the video. I'm almost done. There's a cool old radio. Lots of old radio parts from the 1920s. Old field coils. No, that's a telephone transmitter. Yeah. Macy came to visit. Say hi. She's, she's looking out the door. Look at the old tubes. And that's the end. So I hope you enjoyed that little look at the Gerns Beck Radio Encyclopedia in fake 8mm uh, film. This is actually an app on my phone making it look like 8mm film. Thanks for watching.